Hi guys, welcome back to YouTube channel Chemistry Live UGPG. So let's talk about atomic structure, CC1 paper, G1 paper, Unit 1, Lecture 4. So this is highly beneficial for BSc chemistry students under CBCS syllabus. So I have a simple message for you guys. Please think for innovation, be creative, learn everywhere, anytime and help to learn others. So this is the syllabus for CC1 paper for BSc chemistry students and G1 paper for generic students, unit 1, semester 1, atomic structure. So today we talk about Bohr's theory and its limitation, atomic spectrum of a hydrogen atom, Sommerfeld's modification. So what is Bohr's theory? So to explain the atomic structure, Bohr proposed a theory that is known as Bohr's theory. So an atom consists of a positively charged nucleus. And the electron in an atom revolve around the nucleus only in certain selected circular orbits. And the energy of an electron remains constant in a particular orbit. Each orbit is associated with a definite energy called energy cells like K, L, M, N cells. So as long as the electron is associated with a particular amount of energy, it continues to stay in a particular orbit called stationary orbits or stationary states. The next point is the energy of an electron cannot change continuously for a change in electronic energy of the electron has to jump. The angular momentum of an electron moving around the nucleus is quantized. So angular momentum equal to MBR that is equal to NH upon 2 pi. So that means this is definite or discrete values. And the energy En found to be minus 2 pi square z square MU4 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 square n square s square. So that is the energy of electron in nth orbit. So that found to be minus 13.6 electron volt per atom. The next is limitations of Bohr's model. So it fails to explain the spectra of multi electron atoms. So that means more than one electron system. And it assumes a definite knowledge about position and momentum of electron at the same time. And it could not explain the splitting of a spectral lines. And circular orbits of electrons are planar. But actually electrons move around the nucleus in three-dimensional space. Bohr's theory could not explain the intensity and fine structure of a spectral lines. The next is atomic spectrum of hydrogen atom. So usually atom is excited by applying electronic discharge or radiation of a suitable wavelength so the electron will jump from lower to higher energy level. And the excited state lifetime is small and will return to ground state by emitting energy of certain wavelength or frequency and this gives rise to line spectra or you can call it electronic transitions. So here you can see the spectra of hydrogen atom like Lyman series, Balmer series, Pasten series, Bragg series and Horn series. And uh, this is the graph uh, where you can have uh, different energy levels. So hydrogen spectra consists of a number of discrete lines in the visible and UV region. The space between any two lines correspond to a frequency range in which no light is emitted by the hydrogen atom. And the wave number nu bar of any line in the visible spectrum of hydrogen atom is given by empirical formula that is nu bar equal to 1 upon lambda that is Rs that is called Rydberg constant into 1 upon Ni square minus 1 upon Nf square meter inverse. So Rh Rydberg constant that is 1.097 into 10 to the power 7. So here is the spectra of a hydrogen atom and we got several series of lines for Lyman series n equal to 1 and n2 equal to 2, 3, 4 etc. And the spectral region is UV. Similarly for Balmer series n1 equal to 2, n2 equal to 3, 4, 5 etc. And it is in visible region. Then Pasten series, n1 equal to 3, n2 equal to 4, 5, 6, and it is in IR region. Then Bracked series, n1 equal to 4, n2 equal to 5, 6, 7, etc. And it is in IR region. Then Font series, n1 equal to 5, n2 equal to 6, 7, 8, 
it is in far higher region. So for Lyman series, n1 equal to 1 and n2 equal to 2, that is the first line. And n1 equal to 1, n2 equal to 3, that is the second line. Similarly, n1 equal to 1, n2 equal to 4, that is the third line for Lyman series. So, the mathematical expression that is nu equal to c upon lambda, that is c into nu bar, that found to be 3.28 into 10 to the 15, all into 1 upon ni square minus 1 upon nf square, second inverse. And in terms of energy, that is equal to e equal to h nu, that is 13 to 12, all into 1 upon ni square minus 1 upon nf square ev, mole inverse. So in general, the number of lines in the spectrum found to be n into n minus 1 whole divided by 2, where n is the outermost cell. So let's try some problems. So what are the two longest wavelength lines in nanometers in the series of hydrogen spectrum when n equal to 1 and m greater than 1? So we know the formula 1 upon lambda equal to Rh into 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon m square. So here n1 equal, n equal to 1 and m greater than 1 means it can be 2. So if we put the values of Rh value so that becomes 1.097 into 10 to the minus 2 nanometer inverse whole into 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon 2 square. So it is found to be 8.228 into 10 to the minus 3 nanometer inverse. So that becomes 1 by lambda. So lambda equal to 1 upon 8.228 into 10 to the minus 3. So that becomes 121.5 nanometer. Similarly for m equal to 3. So we can put the values and we found to be lambda equal to 102.6 nanometer. So longest wavelength line. Similarly, you can try another problem. What is the shortest wavelength line in nanometer in the series of hydrogen spectrum when n equal to 1 and m greater than 1? So, if lambda is shortest, so when n is infinity. So, 1 by infinity square, so that is equal to 0. So, here it is found to be lambda equal to 91.16 nanometer. Similarly, another problem, calculate the wavelengths in the first line and series limit for Lyman series of hydrogen atom. So, for first line of Lyman series, n1 equal to 1, n2 equal to 2. So, 1 upon lambda equal to 109678 centimeter inverse whole into 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square. So, it is found to be 822.59 centimeter inverse. So, we can find lambda, so that is found to be 1215.7 angstrom. So for series limit, Lyman series, n1 equal to 1 and n2 will be infinity. So now 1 upon lambda equal to, putting these values, so we can find out lambda equal to 911.76 angstrom. The next is Sommerfeld's modification of Bohr's theory. So if the hydrogen spectrum is observed in a high resolution spectrometer, so some lines reveal fine structure and Bohr's theory could not explain this fine structure. So Sommerfeld explained the splitting of lines by assuming that some of the orbits are elliptical and that they precessed in space around the nucleus. So for first orbit closest to the nucleus, the principal quantum number n1, n equal to 1 and there is a circular orbit. And for principal quantum number n equal to 2, both circular and elliptical orbits are possible. So the electrons moving in an elliptical orbit will have its angular momentum. So to define an elliptical orbit, a second quantum number k, where k is azimuthal or angular momentum quantum number is needed. So the shape of an ellipse or elliptical orbit is defined by the ratio of n by k, that is major axis by minor axis and it may have values from 1 to 10. So for n equal to 2, n by k will be 2 by 2, that is circular orbit, n by k, that is 2 by 1, that is elliptical orbit. So 
So the presence of these extra orbits which have slightly different energies from each other accounts for extra lines in the high resolution spectrum. So here you k equal to 2 a circular orbit and this k equal to 1 that is elliptical orbit. And the original quantum number now replaced by L where L equal to k minus 1. So thus we can have a, when n equal to 0 L value 0, n equal to 2 L can have 0 and 1 value n equal to 3, L value can be 0, 1, 2, etc. So some spectral line split still further into two lines, a doublet is explained by assuming that the electron spin either in clockwise or anticlockwise direction. So please subscribe to our channel Chemistry Live UGPG. This is also available in the website www.chemistrylive.ugpg.com. For class 11th and 12th students, this is the channel Foundation Chemistry AB. So this is a simple step towards e-learning making life better. Thank you all for learning.